to talk about our future, uh, both the future of our species, Homo sapiens, and about your own personal future. And nobody really knows what the world would look like in 2050. The only thing we know for sure is that it will be a very, very different world than today. And perhaps the most important thing to know about the future is that humans will soon be hackable animals, animals that can be hacked. There is a lot of talk these days about hacking computers and email accounts and smartphones and bank accounts, but we are actually entering the era in which it will be possible to hack human beings. Now, what does it mean to hack a human being? It means to create an algorithm that can understand you better than you understand yourself and can therefore predict your choices, manipulate your desires, and make decisions on your behalf. In order to control and manipulate you, the algorithms will not need to know you perfectly. This is impossible. Nobody can know anything perfectly. They will just need to know you a little better than you know yourself, which is not impossible because most people don't know themselves very well. Often, people don't know the most important things about themselves. I know this from my own personal experience. It was only when I was 21 that I finally realized that I was gay, after living for several years in denial. And today, I, I keep thinking back to the time when I was 15 or 16 or 17, and I try to understand how did I miss it? It should have been so obvious, but the fact is that I didn't know. And that's hardly exceptional. Lots of gay men spend their entire teenage years not knowing something very important about themselves. But imagine the situation in a few years when an algorithm can tell any teenager exactly where he or she is on the gay-straight spectrum, just by collecting and analyzing data about you. One way to do it, there are many ways, but one way to do it is perhaps just to track eye movements. The computer can track my eye movements when I surf the internet or watch YouTube and analyze what my eyes do when I see an image say of a sexy guy and a sexy girl walking together hand in hand on the beach. Where do my eyes focus and where do they linger? Now, even if you wouldn't like to use such an algorithm, to hear it from an algorithm, these news about yourself, what happens, let's say, if you find yourself in some birthday party of a kid from your class and somebody has the brilliant idea that hey, I just heard about this cool new algorithm that tells you your sexual orientation, and wouldn't it be so much fun if everybody take turns testing themselves on this algorithm with everybody else watching and making comments? What would you do in such a situation? Would you just walk away? And even if you do walk away, even if you do keep hiding from yourself, from your classmates, you will not be able to hide from Amazon or from the secret police or from Coca-Cola. As you surf the web or watch YouTube or just walk down the street, the algorithms will be discreetly monitoring you and hacking you in the service of the government or a corporation or some organization. Maybe you still don't know that you're gay, but Coca-Cola already knows it. So next time they show you an advertisement, they choose to use the version with the shirtless guy and not the version with the girl in the bikini. And next day when you go to the shop, you choose to buy Coke and not Pepsi, and you don't even know why. You think you did it from your free will. They know why you did it and such information will be worth billions. Now, I know, of course, not everybody is gay, but everybody has some secrets worth knowing. 
Now, what do you really need in order to hack a human being? You need two things, just two things. You need a good understanding of biology, and especially brain science, and you need a lot of computing power. Now, in the past, for thousands and thousands of years of human history, nobody knew enough biology, and nobody had enough computing power in order to hack human beings. So even if the secret police followed you around 24 hours a day, watching everything you do, they still couldn't know what was really happening inside your brain. They still couldn't really understand your feelings or predict your choices or manipulate your desires. But soon, corporations and governments will have enough understanding of biology and enough computing power to hack humans. And when this happens, and it is already beginning to happen, then authority will gradually shift from humans to algorithms. And this is already beginning to happen in more and more fields, even in democratic societies, even without any government coercion, people are willingly entrusting more and more authority to the algorithms. We trust Facebook to tell us what is new. We trust Google Search to tell us what is true. Uh, we trust Google Maps to tell us where to go. Netflix tells us what to watch. And Amazon tells us what to buy. Eventually, within 10 or 20 or 30 years, such algorithms could also tell you what to study at college and where to work and whom to marry and even whom to vote for. And as algorithms become better, they can not only guide and control humans, they might also replace humans in more and more jobs. And this is even true, or especially true, of jobs that demand a good understanding of human feelings. For example, there is a lot of talk these days about self-driving cars. But even in order to replace human drivers, self-driving vehicles or the computers that drive these vehicles, they need not just to know how to navigate the road, they need to understand humans they need to understand and anticipate the behavior both of human customers and also of human pedestrians. They need, for example, to know, to recognize the difference between an 80-year-old and an 18-year-old and a 40-year-old that are approaching the road. And they need to understand something about the difference in behavior between small children and teenagers and adults. Similarly, in order to replace human doctors, computer will need to understand not just our diseases, but also our emotional moods. The computer will have to know whether a patient is angry or fearful or depressed. But it's very likely that computers will be able to do that better than most human doctors, because after all, anger and fear and depression are biochemical phenomena, just like flu and cancer and diabetes. If computers can diagnose flu, computers can also diagnose fear. Now, of course, as all jobs in driving vehicles and in diagnosing diseases will gradually disappear, all kinds of new jobs, which we cannot even imagine at present, will emerge. But the new jobs too, will continue to change and to disappear. Few jobs will remain the same for decades, for, for a long time. Some people imagine that the coming automation revolution will be a one-time event. Let's say in 2025, you have the big automation revolution, lots of jobs disappear, lots of new jobs appear, we have a couple of rough years, and then everything settles down to a new equilibrium in the job market and in the economy. But it will not be like that. It will be a cascade of ever bigger disruptions. You have a big revolution in 2025. 
you have an even bigger revolution in 2035, because by then AI is so much better, and an even bigger revolution in 2045, which means that to stay relevant, you will have to reinvent yourself, not just once, but repeatedly, like every 10 years, 15 years, to reinvent yourself. And the main obstacle for doing that might well be psychological, more than economic or technological. It's just very, very hard to reinvent yourself, especially after a certain age. When you're 15 or when you're 18, you're basically creating yourself, you're inventing yourself, and it is very, very difficult. But it's, even, it's much more difficult to do it when you're 40 or 50. You probably know by now that adults don't like to change. They tell you to change all the time, but they don't like to change themselves, because it's very difficult. So the most important goals of education in the 21st century are probably to develop your emotional intelligence and your mental balance, because you will need a lot of mental balance and mental resilience to deal with a very hectic world, to keep learning throughout your lives, and to repeatedly reinvent yourself and stay ahead of the algorithms. Now, I hope all this doesn't depress you too much. It's not the point. I mean, they told me repeatedly, don't scare the kids. <laughs> but I really think that you can handle it, that you can really rise to the challenge. Humans are extremely adaptable beings. If we know what we are facing, we can adapt to it and, and, and we can find solutions. And I'm really most curious to hear what you have to say about all this. So uh, thank you for listening.